we are standing in our brand new course based on Jim Henson's Labyrinth. You want to get all of those best moments that you remember from the film in there. It definitely has a bit of a theme park feel where each scene is right on top of the next. The scale of this course is definitely way bigger than anything else we've done, even just the area that you actually play through. Most of the holes really do play like you've got one hole in this scene of the movie, you've got one hole in this scene of the movie. We've created massive environments just for one single hole. We've got a lot of characters in Labyrinth that I'll show you, but why don't we head on inside? We've got our classic entry scene that everyone remembers. If you get a view from the entire Labyrinth, you can see just how massive it is and that this entire labyrinth is fully explorable. You can actually go down that road, find another wall about half a mile down the road and actually get into the labyrinth and get yourself lost. We thought about making it so that people couldn't fly out of the labyrinth to force them to complete the maze, but then we decided that was a little bit too mean and some people might get lost in there semi-permanently. So we opened up the ability for people to fly out or get back to the main menu. There's a lot of ways that you can actually enter the labyrinth and get lost. Some of those come back in the fox hunt, so I encourage people to explore or, and get a little lost. Here we've got another famous scene from the movie where the lipstick was drawn. One of the things that we really tried to do in the design of this course is to come up with a way of expressing what happened in that scene through actual gameplay, through mini golf. So you've got the tiles that pop up and turn around creating obstacles or things that you can bounce off and use to your advantage. That was something that Tenenkachi, our lead game designer, really took to heart and found a lot of really clever ways of turning scenes in the movie into actual playable moments. This one is another great example of how Henning did such a great job of taking the idea behind the movie and turning it into that you actually have to choose which hole in order to go into. I won't spoil what happens if you hit it in the wrong one, but uh, you have to keep playing. But we found that the colored lights on the mouths really helped show where those portals were going to be that you're coming out of. The tunnel cleaner, another one everyone remembers so, so well. One of the great things about it being almost more of a theme park is that you also get to go around the backside and get a much closer look at it. Something that was in the movie, but it was a very small detail, but you actually get to see all of the goblins who are powering the tunnel cleaner from the backside. There are 18 lost balls to find, one on every hole, but because the course is so big, it, there's a lot more space to cover, so you're gonna have to look probably a lot harder than you normally do for them. If you look at the hole from up above, you can really see that the pieces have a puzzle piece sort of shape to them. All the course that we do, we try to come up with unique look and feel to the course that does make it stand out, where you look at just the design of a hole and be like, that feels like Labyrinth, or that feels like Cherry Blossoms, or Seagull Stacks, or any of the other courses that we have. We like to come up with a common language for the shape and the feel of the holes, and this really helped define it, as well as giving us a great chance to visit one of the other characters from the film. It is the first course that Don Carson, our senior art director, really started designing from the very beginning. And he was an ex-imagineer. He comes from the theme park world, and he has really brought in a lot of this theme park aesthetic, both in terms of how we're treating the characters, how we're treating the spaces, how spaces flow between each other. And one of the very first projects that he did was designing the top-down view of Labyrinth and helping chart out the course between all of the holes. And you can really get the sense that this is the Labyrinth theme park that's never quite been built in the real world. Just how it's all constructed is a work of art. You can't have Labyrinth without Ludo. All of the characters were a lot of fun to do. Luckily, we've traditionally been an animation studio, and so we have some phenomenal animators are already working for us. In fact, Henning Kachi, lead course designer, is a stellar animator. Chase Shields, who actually just become full-time with us, he's also been one of the lead character animators. Even though it's the first time we're doing characters in this game, it's not like it's the first time that we've been doing animated characters. It does take a little bit of work, though, to take all of our feature film animation knowledge and translate it over to games, as well as just getting it to run smoothly with this many characters all moving on screen at the same time. The Henson Company was great about letting us have some fun where we were able to take the characters and do something interesting with them. So we realized that once we dropped our knocker down and started using it as an obstacle on the course, we needed something to get this guy to stop talking again. So we imagined that all of the various passing players had stuffed their putters into his mouth as a cruel, cruel joke. So I feel bad for him. It was a lot of fun working with Henson to bring these guys into our kind of low poly style. The low poly really helped us because we weren't trying to recreate them exactly. 
but it was a dance where you need to make them feel like the puppets and even the animation really does need to feel like almost like there's actually a hand controlling them as opposed to animating them like you would a more typical character. So we spent a lot of time on that and really just dialing in how you caricature those guys to feel like the original movie even though there's some things that are being tweaked for our low poly style. We're almost thinking of mini golf almost more as a format. And it happens to be the connective tissue that allows us to create these really big inventive worlds or to visit other people's worlds that they've created. It's just a fantastic thing because as soon as you start getting just a little tired of living in one world for a little while, you get to start a completely new project in a completely new world. It also happens to have mini golf, but like I said, mini golf is the connective tissue almost more than anything else. The Goblin City was definitely one of the most challenging environments because the sheer scale, and like I mentioned before, it's one of those where there's so much going on and there's literally only two holes that happen in the entire city. So you really want that sense of going onto a back lot where you can, you know, yes, there's the holes, but then you can still get back and you can explore some of the alleys down the side or you can see what's lurking around a corner. And yeah, there's just so much fun stuff to explore even outside the basic 18 holes of mini golf. One of the other notes that we got from Henson and also just from us watching the movie, chickens. You gotta have chickens everywhere. It's a staple of Labyrinth and so many of the Henson movies. So we made sure to give ourselves a good variety of chickens that we can just populate the world with. The modeling and the art style is something people always key on, but also the lighting is really, really critical. And just all of the different effects that sometimes are even subtle that you might not quite notice really do add up to create a strong sense of place. We hope that people see a level of artistry and it's still low poly, but low poly doesn't mean easy. It means that you really have to have a good eye for what you're doing. We've found that we've really leaned into that low poly aesthetic and it's something that it it is an artistic choice. And to me, like there are many low poly games that tend to that in some ways look better because it allows you to be a bit more abstract or almost impressionistic. And honestly, that's one of the things that we think about a lot when we are doing a course, that it's not about the detail. It's not about what type of rock this particular thing is made of. It's all about where you put the detail and how you use that detail to communicate the important bits. And the irony is that a lot of people, I think, look at this game and think, oh, it's low poly, it's not as challenging. The reality is that we're putting an amazing amount of triangles on the screen and with all of the lighting and all of the effects, which have to be super, super optimized, in most places you can see the entire course at once, which just, that is a big element that gives something a sense of place. The fact that we can go on top of the castle and actually see all the way down to hole one and even see the golfers down there. That is something that is really only possible if you are making some artistic concessions, but it's that balance between the art and the tech that really has to be spot on for something like this to work. I'm excited to show you my favorite hole. We got to go down into the dungeon to get to this one here. This was one of the scenes that made me really want to make this as a mini golf course. We knew that we were going to do something special when it came to this one. This is also one of the first times that we're introducing a bit of a new mechanic. It's only used in one place on this course, but it might show up a little bit later, but we're actually getting to have some fun with gravity here. Oh. <laughs> Let me try that one more time and see if I can get more good. Actually being able to play with gravity and do some stuff that you could really only do in VR. We're really, really excited to get a chance to start playing with some things that you just could never do in a real life theme park or mini golf course. Also even doing things like getting a few more of our characters really sort of like brought into the environment. So yeah, uh, Toby, it's a little creepy seeing the baby walking on the ceiling, but we had to do it. We really needed to represent that climactic moment of the movie where Sarah finally defeats Jareth. And so we got to do some very fun things with our magic crystal ball. The idea for hard mode, we love sort of finding ways of really changing what something looks like or changing the feel that you get. And the general idea that we had a lot of fun with was what would the labyrinth look like during Jareth's masquerade ball? The bubbles, you can actually pop them with your butter. Being able to fully decorate, masquerade everything out, we also went with the conceit that 
the labyrinth is in a different state than it was when you were playing during the day mode. So some of the characters aren't there. The labyrinth course is available now. It's just $2.99 to get the course, and it's a DLC for the base game Walkabout Mini Golf.